Howard Haley of the UK stresses the major difference between conditioned batteries and all other batteries which have not been conditioned. He says, to condition a battery or capacitor, it needs to be repeatedly charged with cold electricity and discharged again. Cold electricity is either high frequency AC electricity or alternatively DC at high voltage. With cold electricity, the electricity flows outside the wires, Steinmetz, and so current does not equal voltage divided by resistance, as Ohm's law suggests. Instead, current equals voltage times resistance times a constant C, which has to be determined by experimentation. It is also possible to get cold electricity from pulse DC provided the DC voltage is over 80 volts. If using that technique, then the sharper and faster the pulses, the better. When you fuss first pulse an AC or DC capacitor, it behaves normally. After approximately 12 hours of continuous pulsing, a change occurs in the behavior of the capacitor. In the case of the water capacitor, it develops a nano coating on one side only. When measured with a resistance meter, it shows no resistance at all. One can say that one side becomes quasi superconducting in the case of an ordinary capacitor. There is no reason to believe that it behaves differently. The capacitor also charges much faster than before, and when the power source is switched off, it continues charging. In my case, it fires pulses for up to three minutes after the power is switched off, which is why these things are dangerous. The firing decays exponentially, although I haven't yet tabulated it scientifically. I leave that for other people to do. The result of this is that you can have two identical capacitors side by side one behaves as if it is plugged into a charger, while the other capacitor behaves normally. All capacitors self-charge to a certain extent, but conditioned capacitors are in a league all of their own. I have tested a neon on a conditioned capacitor through two earth rods ten feet apart. I gave up looking at the lit neon after half an hour. This is the arrangement that he was using. The conditioning capacitor is in series with the neon and the circuit is completed by two earthing rods through the earth. I use a very low powered high voltage source with a power output of only 1.2 watts as I like to play safe with these things. With a low power source I have charged batteries using pulses of up to 800 volts without the battery showing any ill effects. Also, using one wire electricity is safer as that transmits mostly voltage and so minimum current is fed. So condition a, a battery or a capacitor using cold electricity, you can use a circuit like this. And the circuit here shows an ordinary 555 chip with the output pin 3 being connected through a variable resistor of 47,000 ohms linear. There is a 100 ohm resistor to stop you adjusting the uh, variable resistor so far that you get zero uh, resistance between pins 3 to and 2 and 6 which are connected. The signal is taken on then by a 470 ohm resistor into um, a field effect transistor, a P-channel one, IRF9130 type FET transistor. That is used, um, I might remark that it has a, an additional uh, 1N54008 which is a 1000 volt 3 amp fast acting uh, resistor, but anyway the FET powers up 
the primary winding of a simple transformer which is really just a coil that anyone would wind normally. The ratio is high. The primary is only 40 turns and the secondary is 3000 turns. That's fed by only one wire through to the junction between two diodes. Uh, this diode at the top connects through to the negative side of the capacitor and this one here connects through to the positive side of a capacitor and that capacitor builds up in voltage uh, until the voltage across the uh, SCR so they can control rectifier uh, which in this case it happens to be a 2N6509G uh, uh, which has got the uh, the actual trigger mechanism connected across it via a neon. This is uh, an unusual way of doing things but it has proved to be very effective. Howard says here the size of the voltage pulses fed to the battery or capacitor to be conditioned is controlled by the strike voltage of the neon. The ordinary any two type neon lamps strike around 90 volts well 90 volts to 110 typically and so the 2N6509G -G silicon control rectifier will feed pulses of about that voltage to the battery or capacitor. If two neons are connected in series instead of the single one shown then the voltage pulses will be around 180 volts. This type of circuit appears to work better if several capacitors are used in series as shown in the diagram. That is, these capacitors here, they're all the same, they're all 400 volt DC capacitors, and in spite of the fact that any one could handle the entire voltage being fed through to the battery or capacitor being conditioned, it is different when you use five, but more of that later. You have to leave the device running for a day to get the full benefit of the operation. I regularly charge up charge a 1.6 kilowatt car battery bank and after switching off the battery bank voltage goes up. I've also tried 5 seconds of on time and 2 minutes of off time and the capacitors continue firing pulses however the rate of firing is much less when the power is off than when the power is on. If you fail to use the capacitors for a while, in my case about three weeks or so, the uh, system has to be restarted again. You have to start the conditioning process all over from the start. In my con case, conditioning them again was harder and seem to take days rather than hours. The capacitors are cold. The wires leading up to them and out of them are cold. But if you get a shock from them, then that shock is hot. That of course is because a capacitor converts cold electricity into hot electricity. Because this charging process uses cold electricity, Non-rechargeable batteries can be charged this way. In my case, two out of three batteries recover their charge OK, and curiously, they charge to a much higher voltage than their rated value. The battery can be replaced with a capacitor. Obviously, uh, any battery or capacitor which is to be conditioned needs to be able to be charged with a voltage of not more than 70 volts per neon. So, for example, a 96 volt battery bank would need two neons in series across the SCR of the charging circuit. This circuit will keep on charging the battery for up to three minutes after the input power is switched off. An even more powerful version of the circuit boosts the cold electricity power by using a choke. 
the neon will light much more strongly, the neons should pulse or you've got a short circuit. In other words, if the neon is lit continuously, it is a bad sign. The choke there is in series with the SCR. Uh, the choke is just a simple coil of thick wire with just a few turns. You can use a variable resistor in series with the input power to vary the pulse rate. Negative radiant energy is delivered which produces cold electricity and conditions all capacitors in the output section of the circuit. Be very careful with this circuit as it can kill you. This circuit is only for experienced experimenters. Capacitors will take about a day to get conditioned. This circuit is good for bringing dead car batteries back to life. When a battery is conditioned and the charging circuit input power is switched off, the battery will continue charging. Once they're conditioned you can charge four car batteries in parallel using just a 6 watt 12 volt power supply or a solar panel. However, this description must not under any circumstances be considered to be a recommendation that you personally should actually build this circuit as this presentation is for information purposes only. The question has been asked why use five capacitors in series when any one of them can easily handle the voltage being used? That is a good question. Although the answer is not at all obvious, it is a very simple question to answer. The answer is because of the way that capacitors charge up. There's no secret about this. The voltage across a capacitor which is being charged increases in a very non-linear way and is generally in illustrated like this. You have a very fast rise of voltage initially and then that tails off gradually until the capacitor is completely charged. The red lines in this diagram show the average rate of charge and the steeper the line the faster the rate of charge. The greater the charging voltage relative to the size of the capacitor the steeper the start of the line is. Howard uses this fact to his advantage by using just the first 10% of the curve. This is done by connecting several high voltage capacitors in series as shown in his circuit diagram. The combined set of capacitors charge up very fast indeed and before they reach their 10% of their capacity the neon fires and the capacitor charge is driven into the battery or capacitor which has been conditioned. The intensity of that current is determined by the size of the capacitors in the chain. The larger the capacitors, the more intense the pulse into the battery. And as you can see, Howard has chosen 2.2 microfarad capacitors of the plastic film type. On the ones that he has used, shown here, the actual rating is m shown as 250 volts, but the ones he uses are actually rated at 400 volts. And that is the sequence of operations that are used by um, our good friend Howard Haley in his conditioning process, which has shown itself to be very effective in actual operation.